It's one of the most anticipated phones of the year. And also the follow-up to a phone that made us all reevaluate the prices and value that we give our smartphones, especially when we consider the contracts they sometimes come with. And of course, it is the gateway to a quintessential Android experience. Hey, it's Josh Vigar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is the full review of the Google Nexus 5. How about we just jump right into the review and talk about the design. The Nexus 5 comes with a very minimalistic profile, which is definitely the best way to describe the overall design aspect. On the front, we have the black slate design with the 4.95 inch screen, and below it is the notification LED light, which is reminiscent of the Galaxy Nexus from before. Up top, we do have the 1.3 megapixel front facing camera, right next to a phone speaker grill that is actually perforated. Now this is a bit of a unique design choice that I personally like, even if it's not really recognizable right off the bat. On the right side, there is the power button on top of the SIM tray. Now this power button might be a little bit higher up on the device than I would have liked because you had to sort of reach for it and adjust your hand just to find it. However, that's a really nitpicky thing. Opposite the power button, however, are the volume rockers. Now, all of these buttons have a real meaty feel to them, and they are quite rigid. So if you are looking for the buttons without having to look at your phone, you should have no problem feeling for them. We make it around the back and find all of the nice feeling soft touch plastic and a couple design choices that were originally found in the Nexus 7. We do have the Nexus logo in landscape, which is something I really like. And then the large camera lens unit that houses the optical image stabilization that this camera boasts. One thing that did surprise me about the Nexus 5, however, is how light it is. I expected there to be at least a little bit of weight for a phone that had a nearly 5-inch screen. However, once I picked it up, it seemed as light as a feather. This is definitely one of the nimblest phones that I have ever used, and despite having that 5-inch screen, it is still easy to get around all of the elements on the screen. With its lightness and also its understated design, which I think is more of a strong suit than a weak point, the Nexus 5 definitely feels like a small box of lightning in my hand, especially when you consider or everything that it is capable of. Power on the phone and you get to enjoy that near 5 inch screen capable of 1080p resolution at 445 ppi. LG is no stranger when it comes to great displays and the Nexus 5 is no exception. This IPS screen brings some pretty beautiful quality and I'm actually inclined to keep the default stock Android wallpaper set because it shows just how vivid the colors can be through this screen. On top of all of that, however, you do get crisp and sharp text along with some really nice contrast due to some deeper blacks. Aside from that, the handling of the screen is also quite nice as the bezels around it are very respectable, but the top and bottom bezels make it easy to use this phone in landscape mode. All in all, we're looking at a pretty stellar screen that is capable of a lot and deserves to be on a device like the Nexus 5, especially considering its price point. The performance aspect of this phone is a welcome case of low compromises, as the Nexus 5 comes with the Snapdragon 800 clocked in at 2.3 gigahertz, the Adreno 330, and 2GB of RAM. Coupled with the optimizations that were put into KitKat, it is no surprise that the Nexus 5 absolutely flies through all of its elements. When I'm really trying to get a lot of things done at once using the newly enhanced recent app screen, along with all of these optimizations and smooth transitions really make my experience seem very seamless. This may truly be one of the smoothest and best experiences of Android available on any smartphone today. So it is undoubtedly a big point in the plus category for the Nexus 5. As we have come to expect from Nexus devices, there aren't too many extra bells and whistles. The Nexus 5 comes in two flavors, black or white, but also in 16 or 32 gigabytes of onboard storage that are not expandable. Any user of the Nexus 4 that really missed their 4G connectivity can look to the Nexus 5 for full LTE support. I used it on the AT&T network and I have to say, having LTE on a phone like this is definitely, definitely a big plus. Another feature that returns from the Nexus 4 is Qi wireless charging. Now that you can use a plethora of different mats for it, you might have one lying around. So go ahead and bust that out and start charging your phone wirelessly by laying your phone right on it. One of the more disappointing parts of the hardware aspect is in the speakers and the sound quality that they make. Yes, the speakers have been relocated to the bottom of the phone, which is kind of a nice change actually. However, the sound itself still lacks some dimension. And to be honest, it still doesn't get as loud as we would really want. One more time. 
And then we come to the battery, which is a 2300 milliamp hour unit. However, despite it being kind of small, we all did put our faith into the Nexus and the fact that Android KitKat was going to come with a lot of power saving optimizations. Unfortunately, when it comes to this execution on the Nexus 5, this is only kind of the case. You should still get about a decent day's work out of this phone. However, despite all of that, it is when you ramp up your usage that you start to see very easily diminishing returns. While one day I was able to go from waking up to sleeping without the Nexus 5 getting below 20% battery life, I will admit that almost half of that day was spent with the Nexus 5 just sitting in my pocket. And then the next day I did go for about 8 hours, ramping my usage up to about moderately heavy, doing everything from low intensive tasks to extended gaming. And after the end of those 8 hours I had the battery life down to about 30 to 25%. Now for the real power user, that is definitely a bit of a disappointment. While there will be plenty of times when the longevity works perfectly for you, there might be just as many other times that it'll be a big disappointment, and you won't like the power or lack thereof that you're getting from the Nexus 5. And then we move forward to the camera, which is an 8 megapixel shooter on the back, packed with optical image stabilization, which pretty much explains why the lens unit is so large. As far as the app goes, it is the stock Android app that is very minimalistic. I will say, however, that these touch and swipe menus are a little bit cumbersome. You definitely have to get used to them, and it's only then that you will have a real comfortable time navigating all of your settings. Of course, it always comes down to the picture quality. When it comes to the Nexus 5, we were hoping that it would blow the Nexus 4 out of the water, and in this respect, it definitely does. However, when it comes to picture quality in general, the Nexus 5 is only average, again, at best. When you have a really great lighting, like let's say in broad daylight, you get a generally good picture. We do see that the HDR Plus does a much better job of processing all of the colors and provides you a much better picture. With that in mind, you may want to keep HDR Plus on, well, pretty much all the time. As light diminishes, so does the quality of the photo, at least in most cases. I will say, however, though, that the OIS built into the camera does do its job and floods more light in. It's just the quality of that picture that comes out out of the shot that is a little bit lackluster. One great feature about the OIS is that the videos get stabilized as well. As you are recording videos, if you're trying to be steady already, the OIS will help you out even more and provide you with a pretty damn smooth video. And if you're not trying that hard, OIS will definitely compensate for the jerkiness that you might have and when you're holding your phone. All in all, the Nexus 5 camera is far from its biggest disappointment, but it also doesn't necessarily amaze us. That being said, it's still not a bad tool to have in your pocket when you need to take a quick shot wherever you are. And finally, we make it over to software in which we find the newest version of Android, 4.4 KitKat, which was probably just as anticipated as the Nexus 5 smartphone itself. When you first power on Android and get right in there, you'll find some pretty obvious changes right off the bat. The main one being that Google Now is now a second home screen all the way on the left. And you can also access it by just saying, okay, Google. And the way the transitions are with the optimizations put into KitKat make this a very smooth process, and it just feels very fast and very nice. You'll also notice more transparency in the notification bar up top and in the bar that houses the soft keys at the bottom. All of these bars also move away when you're using particular functions like reading a book or playing a game. Also, when you're in those functions, you can swipe down from the top. That way, the notification bar will appear for you to check if you have any new messages or notifications easily. As far as general design is concerned, there's definitely a flatter profile to everything inside of Android 4.4 KitKat. And there's a bit of a bubbliness that has been added in there as well, as you can see in the bottom where the, where the app drawer icon is. I had some slight concerns about that because I didn't want my stock Android to become cartoonish. However, after some time with the phone, I really don't find that to be the case anymore. And the phone dialer app has been given the ability of search as well. If you have a number that you have to find for a business, or if you just want to figure out if there's something nearby for you, you can use the dialer app and just add in a couple words and it will search nearby for those things. However, I think by far my favorite addition to KitKat has to be in the lock screen when you're listening to music. You get full screen album art. It's a great contextual way of changing your phone based on what you're listening to and it just is really cool and really nice. 
Android has come a long way and KitKat is a beautiful, beautiful example of that. Not only is it a simplistically elegant interface, its transitions and downright speed just make it feel like everything you're doing takes up no time at all. And finally, we come to the price, which is probably one of the most attractive parts of the Nexus 5. For $349 unlocked, you get the base 16 gigabyte model and a gateway into one of the best experiences on a smartphone that you might have this year. And so, there you have it, the Nexus 5. Like I said before, it just feels like lightning in a box. The concessions made on this smartphone might bum you out a little bit, but you have to keep in mind that price point. In a lot of different respects, the Nexus 5 absolutely excels, and it almost feels like the price should be a lot higher for a phone that performs just as well as this. All in all, you have to look at the Nexus 5 as a total package, and as a package, it is very attractive. The reason being because for that price point for an unlocked phone, it gives you the essentials. It gives you everything that you need without much fuss at all. As always, thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this review of the Nexus 5. Don't forget to drop us a like down below and to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Also, you should follow us on social media. The links are up there. And if you want to see what I'm up to every now and then, you can follow me on social media down below, usually under the username Josh Salutes. Stay tuned to Android Authority for all of the best coverage from reviews to comparisons to even our continuing coverage of the Nexus 5. That's right, we're not done yet, because we're your source for all things Android.